December 1st. Returning to Mississippi brings back all kinds of feelings. I lived here for a good many years with Bandit. Every inch of this place has a memory. Every corner has a story. But the cobwebs have taken over. The mice have moved in. To come and visit for a week is a trip into the past. But to stay here any longer would be very difficult. December 3rd. In a moment of irony, the sky started pouring rain on my way to film interviews at the Bastards Crossing set, where we had our fair share of rain. The weather must have a sense of humor. December 8th. This past week in Mississippi has reminded me of why I love this place, and also why I cannot live here. But to come and visit, yes. And to tell stories here, certainly. December 9th, the last marathon week of the year. Today I return to Tombstone. Saturday and Sunday, I help Brianna on her movie. Tuesday, I go back to Superior. Wednesday, I film in Scottsdale and Chandler. Thursday, back to Tombstone. Friday, we finish filming the documentary, and then rest. December 12th. Once again, I wonder if I should work on other people's movies. Is it a good use of my time and energy? And do I have the patience for it? At least on the independent local level, I think I need to focus on my own work and let others learn lessons their own way. December 14th, this is the final sprint of the year. I can see the light at the end of this week, and I'm ready for a break. December 15th. When I arrived at John's house today, I was greeted by chaos. Their kitchen floor was being redone. The dogs were barricaded in another part of the house, and I wasn't sure where to put all my things. After struggling to get Tank behind the barricade, I told John I'd put my things in the cigar room for now, adjacent to the kitchen. He said that would be fine. Flash forward a few hours later, and we find out that we can't step on the floors until the next morning. My things are trapped in the cigar room, and I needed to prep for the next day's shoot. Thankfully, one of the windows was open, so I crawled through like a burglar and slowly rescued my belongings and gear. December 16th. The adventures continued today as we recorded Ellie's interview out at Johnny Ringo's grave. On our way back, we started to realize that the plan for the day which also included shooting Ellie's cover photo for contention and recording my final interview for the documentary at Gammon's Gulch, was becoming jeopardized by a lack of time. We only had a few hours left of daylight, and then we arrived in the town of Dragoon, and all traffic stopped for a slow train, which then came to a complete stop and showed no signs of movement. We waited, searched for alternate routes, and soon other vehicles began turning around. But one white truck pulled down an easement dirt road beside the tracks. Ellie and I urged John to try it, and after some early hesitation, he decided there was nothing to lose. It turned into a fun adventure, as we took the dirt road for about eight miles and saved ourselves a ton of time by not waiting for the train. It was one of those moments where taking a risk proved to be a profitable decision. I shot Ellie's photos, 
and we wrapped my interview just as the last light of day left the sky. December 18th. It was funny how something seemingly insignificant can completely change the way you see someone. It's the little things that show a person's character. December 20th. Now I'm in Colorado and on vacation, so to speak. I'm forcing myself to work only one hour every day. From 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., I get as much done as I can. After that, I'm not allowed to work anymore. December 24th. I can't tell if this is the beginning or the end, or maybe both. Some things are coming to a close. Other things are opening up. And I'm moving forward. December 29th. My dad asked me the other morning if this time of relaxation, mostly taking a break from work and resting my mind while reading and watching movies, has been helpful. The honest answer is I don't know. I have not felt a direct effect of this self-imposed vacation. However, I suspect that the break will strengthen my state of mind for the work that awaits me this coming year. December 31st. This is my last day off before the coming year. Tomorrow, I'm hitting the ground running, hoping for an ambitious start to 2023. The snow hasn't melted for days, like memories stubbornly hanging on. I move into the new year with those memories at my heels.